The goals were to make a lot of good surf songs. That's all I knew at that time, you know. Yeah. Well, I get anxious like it's getting a lot. That's what I live with. It shows you the inner strength that he is still remains a creative and vibrant artist. And it also speaks volumes about the enduring uh, depth of his music, that it still means something to people after all this time. I'm telling you, it's only a handful of people who, who pulled that off. Sweetheart. Hi. You are. We're going to play a good show, man. Yeah, man. Cool beans. Hi, Elizabeth. I'm going to give you one of these hugs. All right. All right, buddy. Hey, 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 give me a hand. Yeah. Yeah, real guy. All right. Good enough. I'll give you a bit Hey, you brought it. Guess what I listened to last night? What's that? You're never going to. Randy Newman's album, Stay the Way. That's great. Oh, what an album. That's man. a great album, That Brian. is a good album. Oh, man, R Ricky Fatone and I used to listen to that a lot. You here. know what t What year that came out? 1972. 72. Same when we were in Holland. It's a depth of time. Uh, yes. Right, and I, I played uh, Sailor with Ray Newman a bunch of times in Holland. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful album, man. Yeah, it is. Great album, Brian. Surprise. Hey. That's right. My man. Yes, he Oh. <laughs> All right. Is Debbie with you? Yeah. She's upstairs. Good. Good. She's going over stuff. Well, I'll see you soon, Chef. Yes. There's certainly a, a connection. He's tapped into something that connects all the great songwriters, you know, to, to Gershwin and then Debussy and then Mozart and Bach. And there's something that he does that's tapped into that. We'll do all these. We'll do it again. Sorry. Is this the uh, the, the uh, farm uh, surf medley? Or? Yeah, we're gonna re we're gonna rework it though. But then it's filtered through his own inventiveness and his own sort of quirky way mm -hmm. that has its own character, its own personality. Have you ever ran for an hour? No. I could run for one whole hour. I have no idea how you could do that. You ever go swimming? I've swam in a pool, but I've never done a lot of laps. Like an Olympic-sized pool, never swim? I have, but maybe like once back, once forth, not oh. back and forth and back and forth. For like an hour. Oh, my god. Yeah. Well, here we are at Pepperdine. You want to stop and do some laps? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wow, here we are. That mess up. doesn't look the same at all. No? Is it bigger now? Yeah. OK, I see her over here. I'm the principal of Hawthorne High okay. School. Nice so to meet you. What are you going to do for me? <laughs> I would love to change a grade for you. OK. I, I've heard that, that some <laughs> horrible teacher at this school gave you an F. Is that right, true? Right, Fred yeah, Morgan. Yeah, I have a piece of paper in there where I sign off and right. turn it into an A. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to come in? Yeah. They're gonna get. They're gonna give you a, a little golf cart to ride in. For me, the love that's what the music really is. I know that love. It's what I really wanna share. Drive to center field. Well, I get anxious like it's getting a lot. That's what I live with. It should get better, really, any day now. Those were my teenagers. They said go out and get a steady job. That was the worst idea. What do you think, Brian? I love this place. Do you have any memories from center field? 
I remember I could throw it all the way to the catcher. You could throw it from here to the catcher? Yeah. No bounce? No. Wow. Here I am, 51. Oh, yeah. Looks like maybe the tallest guy, huh? Yeah, hey. <laughs> it's cool. Good after this. I've seen enough of this damn place. <laughs> I know that love is what I really wanna share. I know myself, I know my I'm going to high school. Being by the field was a trip for me. Santa Mel trip. You got me an A? <laughs> yeah, I gave you an A. <laughs> like, what was the grade before? Here's an F. Now I got an A. <laughs> All right. <laughs> To be the greatest ever center fielder, the Yankees have. Whoa, that was cool. That was. You got your grade changed. And then we went on the baseball field, incredible. Yeah, that was a memory for me, good memories. I, mean, I thought of my school friends. Keith Lent? Keith Lent, Robin Hood, Ted Sprague. Right. All my friends. We finished Smile and did Brian Wilson Presents Smile, which got you a Grammy, right, and got really a lot, a lot of acclaim. What, what, what do you remember about? So, what did it take to finally do that in 2005? I, I you know, I don't know. <laughs> you just, <laughs> it's just a lot of work. Van Dyke and I were working together. Yeah. Right? Oh, it was a relief to get it done. People loved it. Yeah, I remember. It's very, when... very advanced music. I thought, you know, Van Dyke's oh, yeah. music is very advanced. You know, he was quite the great, great music person. I mean, you what? came up with, you know, yeah, slapped yourself, it, yeah. man. You came up with all that music, I mean. I helped out with it, yeah. <laughs> were all those songs written a after Pet Sounds, or were they sort of gestating? After Pet Sounds. After Pet Sounds. Yeah. What was, do you remember what the, the circumstance was for writing Surf's Up? Surf's Up was written at my piano in, at the 1448 Lower Oweya House, and uh, I don't know, it's kind of like a, foggy memory. Yeah. I just remember him and I kind of like working together. We didn't take any drugs, you know. We did it on the Natch. And he and I just slowly worked and manufactured a song. You have the the music first and then and then Van Dyke wrote the <laughs> Well, we wrote the music and lyrics simultaneously. Simultaneously. Okay. And the two parts at yeah. different times or or you conceived it as one cuz you know, that's... We did it in one day. One day, wow. Yeah. Both parts, Dove Nested Towers, all that. Right. Wow, quite a day. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that was a pretty good day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you surfed? I surfed a little bit, just in small waves, not on big waves. And that, I really like that Have a lot. Have you ever surfed mat, all the surf mats? Oh, yeah, like boogie boards? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, me too. You like it? Yeah. It's fun riding those waves, isn't it? Yeah, we've had some pretty good times driving around. Yeah. I remember sushi in Malibu. Oh, man. Nobu? Great sushi. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. That was about three, four years ago. Yeah. How far back does Gershwin go for you in your life? I was three years old. Wow. What, what happened when you were three? My mother played me Gershwin, uh, the Brian Seen Blue, when I was three years old. I was just sitting on the floor listening. Can't remember what I what I felt like, but I, I I couldn't believe how I knew I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. So over the years you go back and re-listen to that right. one again. How about your mom? Mom taught me how to be a you know a nice person. Mm hmm How was their relationship? A uh, good one. They got along pretty good. Nice. Your mom was very kind and soft spoken. Yeah. Really shine all the time. <laughs> do the do the do <laughs> do the sweet. Are you recording this, you bastard? Do the sweet magnolias blossom round everybody's door. 
he is his niece. No! Do the folks keep eating possum till they can't eat, eat no more? Hey, will you do it straight, please? Da da da. Dee dee dee. About swine. Who wrote this? Da da da. Old two. Old three. Old da da da. Do they laugh? Do they sing? Da dee da 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 Something like this. If, if it's true, that's where I belong. I can't remember it. I'm sorry I called you a bastard. I didn't mean that. I could tell that was probably a little emotional for you today. It was. It really was, Jason. Going back to Hoffman High School was a very, not scary, but a very emotional experience. Mm -hmm. I remember the handball courts in the, the, the uh, baseball field and the train tracks. I've been there since 1960. Somebody suggested, Brian, that, that, that Rhapsody in Blue had some influence on you when you were writing Good Vibrations. Is that, is no, that true? No, that's not no? true. No, okay. It's not true. Nice try. Somebody said it. So, hey, Brian, because we're at Capitol, um, what do you remember about recording here? And um, Well, I remember Ten Little Indians, chug -a -log, Cuckoo Clock, County Fair, um, summertime blues. Yeah, I was just our, one, our first really good album. Our first yeah, album. your first album. You cut, you cut, a, yeah, a lot of it here. Yeah, it's such a big room compared to where you got to working at Western. Was it at all intimidating working in in such a big space with you know? It was. Yeah, I remember being a little scared. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, Mike kind of kept kept us cool. You know. But after that, I noticed you you didn't, after that first album, you almost never came back to Capitol. Right, right. We went over to Western. What, what was it you preferred about Western? I liked their bass sound and their high sound, the high frequency. Okay. And it was a little more clear. This, this, it's, it's, it was better than Capitol. Right. You hardly ever worked in, in big rooms. No. Western and Gold Star. They're not real big studios. No, no. And, and I, studio, I, studio One at, at Western was the big that's studio. That's big. Yeah. Bigger than this. You didn't, you didn't work in there much, did you? It no. Wasn't, it wasn't around until no. 60, late 64. The only time I know of you working in a big room over there was on the Christmas album. Right. When, when it was you know, the, big, the big orchestra right. and everything. Yeah. Do you have a favorite or any favorites from your, from your solo career as opposed to the Beach Boy stuff? My solo career? Your, so, your solo albums. Do you have any? I'm mostly any? proud of Gershwin and Disney. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And my Christmas album. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Even more so than say the ones with the the original right. songs. Okay. Yeah, we didn't touch on Love and Mercy when we were we were talking about the first your eighty yeah. uh, eighty seven solo right. record. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about writing that? I wrote it in nineteen eighty eight, and I remember I, I had a half a half a bottle of champagne, and I started to cool out, you know, and I said I'm gonna write a song about love, you know and how people need love. So I thought, Love and mercy, that's what you need tonight. Yeah. And that's really become one of your, well, it's, your, it's been the closing piece the for your- the last song of the show. Yeah, the, the show for- well, It's the last song in the encore. Yeah, what, 10, 15 years now you've been- Yeah. Closing your show with that. And and you wrote it that quick? Yeah. The, the, the main... I wrote it about 45 minutes. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> quick, quick, really quick. quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, is it autobiographical, or you you just thought it was something, a sentiment you thought people needed to hear? Yeah, I thought people would need to hear those. Yeah, lyrics. and it doesn't doesn't seem to be getting any any less so as time goes by. That's for sure. Well, in 1964, I worked real quick. I was real energetic, and I worked real fast. Now, in the last 10 years, I've been working very much slower, using Pro Tools and computers. I'm, I'm working a lot slower now. Do you ever miss the the kind of old old paradigm where because you didn't have all these tracks, 
you had to make your mind up fast. It sort of like kind of forced you into making decisions that right. now you can put off. Right. What do you prefer? I don't. <laughs> you don't have a preference one way or the other? No.